Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. I got a question for you. Do you know what's under your hood? Yeah, under your car hood. Do you know how those things work? Do you know what to do if something goes wrong? Do you know what to point out? Do you know where it goes wrong? Stay tuned to find out what's under your hood. See you right after this. <music> So most of us are familiar with the battery, more specifically, lead acid batteries like the one we're looking at right here. Now the purpose of the battery is to provide the electrical power needed to start the car. When you turn the key in the ignition, you are igniting the electrical system. Essentially, the battery has chemicals. The battery has chemicals inside, which are made up of about 30 to 50% sulfuric acid and immersed in this acid, uh, the battery acid are at least two lead plates, one negatively charged and one is positively charged. That's why we have the negative and positive terminals sticking out of the battery housing. Now these terminals are the extensions or connections to the negative or positive plates. When the battery is fully charged, it means that these plates are fully charged. This means that it has enough cold cranking amps to start your car. Cold cranking amps are abbreviated by the letters CCA. You can see the cold cranking amps on this battery here. See right there, it says cold cranking amps at zero degrees Fahrenheit is 680, and the cranking amps at 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 850. Now, cold cranking amps is a battery's ability to start the engine in cold weather or cold temperatures. Typically, the CCA rating or cold cranking amp rating for a car is between 350 to 650 amps for cold weather. The higher the CCA number or cold cranking amp number, the better for cold weather, but maybe not as much for hotter weather because the higher CCA batteries require more plates, which can lead to corrosion in warmer weather. So basically, the battery converts chemical energy in the acid into electrical energy when the key is turned in the ignition and that energy eventually is converted to mechanical energy. So when the battery does its job in converting the chemical energy into electrical energy, it transfers that short burst of electrical energy to the starter, which you can't see here. It's typically under the car or somewhere in the lower portion of the engine. That energy is also enough to reach the spark plugs through the distributor and ignite the fuel inside the combustion chambers and move the pistons, turning that electrical energy into mechanical energy. But the battery is also the first leg of the relay race as it passes the baton, its electrical energy, to its teammate, the alternator, which is right over here. The alternator takes the electrical energy provided by the battery to power itself mechanically and then takes that same mechanical energy and turns it back into electrical energy, much like a generator, to power certain electrical systems in the car, like the radio, AC, and other devices. If the alternator gets too overloaded, then it has its teammate, the battery, to back it up and give it that boost of energy when needed to take it around the track or city or wherever you're driving to. Now here's the fuse box. Now, what is the purpose of the fuse box? Well, it houses the fuses and they're just like circuit breakers in your electrical panel in your home. By the way, if you wanna learn about electrical panels in your home, watch the videos on basic house wiring and you'll find out what that's all about. So fuses are like circuit breakers, except you can't reset them like a circuit breaker. You have to replace them because once the fuse is blown or burnt out, that's it for the fuse. Kind of like a light bulb once the filament is blown out the bulb has to be replaced. If something isn't working in your car, like the lights, the radio, or windshield wipers, or any number of issues, it may be a blown fuse. You can tell if a fuse is blown just by looking at the filament inside. If the metal inside is not broken or burnt out, then the fuse is okay. If you see some burn marks and it's broken inside, the fuse is done. Fuses protect the car's electrical circuit. The fuse box, the housing, protects the fuses themselves from the elements like water, excessive heat, or cold. 
fuses are designed to stabilize or regulate electrical current flowing through the wiring in the car. The wires are connected to all the electrical components in your car, and if the current is too strong and the fuses do not regulate them, these components will be damaged and you will have problems starting the car, turning down your windows, or any number of issues can pop up. So if there's an electrical overload or an excessive current surge, the fuse will blow, stopping any further damage to the system caused by overload, which can result in fires. And I've seen big rig trucks literally reduced to ashes because of electrical fires. The location for the fuse box is gonna be different in every brand of car. But if you're having trouble finding the fuse box, just uh, check your owner's manual to find out where it is. Most vehicles have two fuse boxes, one under the hood like this one, and this one protects you know, the engine components like the cooling systems and so forth. And then you may have one inside the car under the dashboard or somewhere like that near the driver's area. And that one protects the interior electrical components. Now the fuse box also houses what we call relays. These are some relays, okay? Okay, so these gray blocks right here, these are the relays, and these right here are the fuses. So relays can open and close circuits, and they can allow voltage to reach certain components, all right? So for example, if your headlights only need a certain amount of voltage, the relays can regulate the amount of voltage reaching the headlight and not allow an excess amount of voltage to reach them. And relays are designed to protect you, the driver, from the electrical system by keeping the high voltage in the system away from the drive switches. Now drive switches are simply the on-off switches in the car for lights, windshield wipers, you know, switches for the sunroof and other accessory switches. Any switch that toggles up and down are considered drive switches. And the relays protect you, once again, from any kind of voltage coming through those switches shocking you. So you can think of a relay as a switch that turns the voltage on and off when needed. Now let's talk about replacing the fuses. You don't want to mix and match fuses, for example. You don't want to replace a 10 amp fuse with a 30 amp fuse. Why is that? Because the 30 amp fuse will allow more current to pass through to an electrical component that was only meant to handle 10 amps. That can damage the component or worse, start a fire. Or vice versa, you don't want to replace a 30 amp fuse with a 10 amp because the 10 amp will allow less current to pass through to a component meant for 30 amps. And the 10 amp fuse will not last a second. It will blow because of the excess amperage. So when you replace fuses, keep the amperage the same. Okay guys, so we pretty much covered three things that's under your hood so far. That's batteries, alternators, and the fuse box. And what's inside a fuse box? Fuses and relays, right? So guys, there's a lot more that goes on under the hood that we didn't get to in this video, but we'll get to it in the upcoming videos. So if you learned something today about what's under your hood that you didn't know before, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.